these are like woodworking joints. We can now 3D print this stuff very easily. So, woodworking people, what kind of joint can you make that 3D printers cannot? Hello, welcome to Scratch 3D Printing. In today's video, we will be looking at dovetail joint again, but this one is a Japanese dovetail joint. Let's scratch today's topic. I don't know if this is actually a Japanese dovetail joint, but it's what they call it on the video I found, which I will leave down in the description below. And if you want to download this, it will be available on Make It World. It will also be on my Patreon too. So what kind of joint is this? Is this one. Look at that. This looks freaking cool, right? Oh my gosh, I love this. It looks so beautiful. These parts fits really nicely together, but they can only be fitted in one way and one direction. If I try to fit it in this way, it does not fit. It does not fit. And if you look at the piece right here, it looks pretty difficult to put them together. And you might think that, well, these parts will never fit together. But if you put it at the right angle, like this, it, it's kind of like halfway of each, which is the start point. And then you just slide it in and it locks together. You cannot bend it back where it will be difficult. You cannot bend it anyway. You cannot pull it apart too. The way you disassemble this is the opposite way. You need to pull it at an angle like this to make it go apart. I tried printing at 0.2 millimeter tolerance, but it fits very nicely and easily. I lowered the tolerance to negative 1.5, which is this other piece right here. And it still fits really nicely. This one was printed on the ND3 v 3 This piece was printed on the Kio one Pro, and both of them fits really nice together. So I was like, even at 0.15, the tolerance is still really good. So I decided to make it zero tolerance which is this piece right here so find the angle at it and then you push it in at zero tolerance it fits it fits really nicely at zero tolerance but you can see there's a teeny tiny gap so i guess the perfect tolerance will be like 0.075 ish or 0.06 but i didn't want to experiment more with it and zero tolerance fits really nicely with this Japanese style dovetail joint so I was like okay zero tolerance work and if you want it to be stuck together you can just use super glue and it will be stick together well what is this good for well if you want to make a box with these kind of joint just to make your model look pretty and awesome you can just copy these tail or whatever they call to the other side here and then do the same thing for the white part here and you can connect four of them together to make a box to make anything you want you can also make a table with this this being the top copy this white part over here and you have a table right there and it's very durable and it looks freaking amazing these are like woodworking joint and yeah we can now 3d print this stuff very easily so woodworking people what kind of joint can you make that 3d printers cannot i'm just kidding i have no hate in woodworking because i love watching those videos and it's very satisfying when they make it completely fit together like this so I got inspiration from that and I love watching those so I decided to make myself some and yeah just look at this dude this looks so freaking awesome the way these things are like angle and how it fits together with two different colors like this it's just wow it's just so amazing and it's also so amazing how 3D printers can do this within hours basically just hours and you only need one machine which is a 3D printer, unlike woodworking, where you need like a circular saw, you need like these big giant table saw, you need all these sander, you need all these tool, all these carving tool, you will end up spending like what over three, four thousand just for the tools. But with 3D printers, you can just get like a 200, 300 dollar 3D printers and just use a free CAD software online and you can make these joint very easily of course you will need filament too same with wood working you will need the wood which i find wood is more expensive than filament from the look of this it's actually quite difficult to uh, make these because let me try take it apart because it's like at an angle like this right it starts right here but then it goes all the way over here so if you look at perfectly straight these part are not just like model and then extrude you need to model the start part and the end part right here and then you extrude them together which i did it on fusion 360 and it's called loaf on fusion 360 which connects two parts together and you will get this amazing angle like this which has the different start point and a different end point it's way different from just extrusion and i'll show you exactly how i made this on fusion 360 right now 
Okay, so this is how I made the Japanese dovetail joint on Fusion 360. I already made them, so I will just go through the timeline at the bottom here. Because if I remake this, I think it's going to take like 30 minutes, 1 hour-ish. <laughs> so first, what I did was make a sketch right here. So I just made a 60 by 10 millimeter sketch, and that is it. Then I extruded. I extruded out 50 millimeters. You can extrude to whatever you think you might need. The next thing I did is make another sketch here. So the sketch here is at an angle like this. I didn't do the angle. What I did was just make offsets right here. So from this middle groove here, um, at the bottom, it's a six millimeters offset here. And then the distance on the second groove is five millimeter. The third one here is an offset by 10 millimeters, as you can see down here. The dimension of this third is five millimeter at the bottom by the top. And then I just connect those nine. Then what I did is just copy of this mirror over to this side so that I get a perfect mirror and it's less complicated doing that so once i finished my second sketch i made a construction plane offsets from this face right here at 10 millimeters then i made another sketch at this plane right here so that'll be my third sketch and this one is kind of confusing here because it was a lot to take in from me so this is the best i got and this is the third sketch and second sketch as you can see there that's the second sketch and that's the third sketch so the difference is the, the second sketch is bigger the third sketch which which is the 10 millimeter offset it's slightly smaller so the top portion here is 1.5 millimeters offset from the middle point and then the bottom is two millimeters offset from that point but sketch two it's still bigger than this sketch same thing with this this was the original line of sketch 2 and then i moved this a little bit to the left then the offset was not three millimeters it was 1.5 millimeters from this point right here unlike the second sketch which is this line right here and it's three millimeters i did the same thing for the third one too and it's five millimeters offset for that one it looks complicated but the next step will explain all of this sketch and then i made my first loaf so as you can see here the loaf is connected from this point to this point only and that is how i made this first groove right here i think that's how you call it which has a bigger distance in the back and then smaller at the front here and it goes at an angle like this which looks really cool i did that for the second one as you can see there the third one which is the middle one and then just repeat that on the other side and now i got all of these groove at an angle like this so if you close all the sketch and look at this like that it looks quite weird right yeah it looks weird to me too, but once it connects together, it looks really, really cool. It looks a little bit better at the top, but the best to look is like at a angle like this, which you can see all of it. Well, what is the next thing? I hide this body. I open the first catch, which is this one, and then I extrude it over like this and then extrude one more time all the way down like this so that we have a 90 degree angle right here then what i do is i don't make any more sketch or anything like that i just use this combined tool at the top here selecting this body first and then the top body and the setting right here i use the cut tool i keep the tool which means is this red part if you don't keep it it's gonna disappear and you don't have it so i kept the tool here i click ok if we hide the first body that's exactly how we get this groove right here, which is a perfect fit for this top piece here. I did not know that you can fit zero tolerance with this joint right here, which is exactly this. So if you want to have clearance or tolerance, um, you can hide that body. Just use the press pull up here. Select this, this, this. Just select all of this body right here like that and you just type a negative number and it will offset by that much. So negative 0.1, negative point five negative point two whatever you want i'll just leave it at zero tolerance because it fits really well and then the last step that i do is just to fill it everything out just to fill it all the edges so that we don't have any sharp corner and this is ready to 3d print it and that is how i get this amazing joint okay so it's out there it is a little bit more difficult to make these on fusion 360 or on any CAD software out there for me at least because the end point and the start point is different from each other. Usually I just make the sketch and extrude, right? But this time it's different. You need them to be at a really cool angle like this. Just so you can have a cool start point and end point. It looks crazy and it looks amazing. Put it, put them together, you have a different point. 
same with the opposite side and it just look really really cool right this looks freaking awesome that's it with this video of me showing off this Japanese style dovetail joint and it looks amazing like I said the link for this will be in the description down below on Make a World. It will also be on my Patreon. And yeah, let me know in the comments down below what do you think about these kind of videos. Does it look cool? Does it look not cool? I think it looks really cool. Yeah, thank you so much for watching. And as always, keep on 3D printing.